I only realised fairly recently that I'm terrible at multitasking. And so this is kind of a line in the sand uh, for the analog computer thing. So when I come back to it, it'll remind myself. It's a note to self video, really. Um, although I should say, why bother with an analog computer? Um, I think it's because any any system that interacts with the outside world, your sensors and your activators, whatever, um, you're going to have some analog subsystem. And so in the chain, you've got the real world, you've got some analog to digital, digital to analog, out again, whatever. And um, you spend, it's very easy for someone like me to spend a hell of a lot of time on the breadboard and you're poking about with wires when it's really the same circuit you're doing over and over again absolutely the same circuit but variations on it and like it's down to some very basic units i mean like you'll have on the analog side you'll have an op amp um wherever they are this is like eight pin dueling line chip op amp operational amplifier and you, you're doing these functions like integration uh, like multiplicate well slightly different uh, multiplication uh, different functions like logs or exponential also on, on the music side you know by analog synths you've got the exponentiator so you've got the octaves on the keyboard so you've got one volt per octave for example uh, so you need to exponentiate that to plug into um, a loop that's going to be your oscillator and so you get your bleepy tones out and um, it seems to make sense to me to make an analog synthesizer uh, more or less that's quite a good thing the pitch on the very good book list by the way about I don't know six or seven euro um, Bernd Ullman one of the few people that's actually um, making analog computers commercially and I think the market is basically sort of, uh, tech tech parts of colleges and that kind of thing uh, you got a bunch of potentiometers a patch bay and more patch bay and You've got functional units, things like integrators or whatever. And it seems to make sense to me that, like, a general purpose analog computer. I mean, we're all doing analog computers when we put things together on the uh, breadboard. But, like, having one that you can poke about with seems to make sense. So, um, as I'm sure you're aware, if you've done any electronics development, then a big part of it always comes down to how are you going to put the thing together physically and it, it struck me as quite and i'm trying to do this on a budget this is a box bought from amazon maybe uh very cheap about five or so um meant as a gift box that you could do decoupage or whatever on it uh, except I've torn out the top and this is a piece of uh, aluminium coated plastic like there's two layers there's a middle of plastic then there's a thin layer of aluminium on either side and then there's uh, plain white aluminium on top and I think that will make a really good front plate. And I mean, I would, I would have, if I'd have thought about it a bit more, what I should have done was make, built it so that it would fit inside, like so, and have the lid on top. But you know, getting ahead of myself, I, it's going like that. Um, <laughs> Um, the aims, right, is quite 
chopped a cigarette here. Oh, this thing. The aims are like, I want to be able to get enough that I can um, do the chaotic circuits, can do the um, things like simple pendulum, simulate that. And so that kind of gives me a, um, what's the word, a scope. And uh, so, I. Uh, on this, uh, so here's, here's my work in progress sketch of what this front panel will look like. Bloody great patch bay, bunch of potentiometers down the bottom. Um, and they, well, so some reference voltages here um, from the potentiometers here you've got effectively constants coming in uh, summers just like the plus plus operator uh, integrators and then a bit of weird stuff like multipliers couple of multipliers for, like for some of the chaotic circuits you need two multipliers and they're very handy things to have but like, like um, well you can imagine like the multiplication operation is quite useful uh, I also want it's one thing to the the folks that like the traditional analog computers seem to have lacked a little bit is uh, the function generators and it's very easy to do a log and exponential generator um, I should say like most of this will be built around op amps uh, and I don't care I don't care about the precision if, if necessary I can get a multimeter and put it on it to measure the exact voltage just as long as it's kind of ballpark so you've got a number from 0 to 10 uh, yeah using plus or minus 15 volts so that I can go 0 to 10 volts either way uh, with 10 as the head or foot and um, so like the, the adders will have a times 10 input and a, a unary input um, and like the the integrators, they need time constants, so that's just switch capacitors. I mean, that's the um, the thing when it comes down to precision, like the on the time scale, that's you're a bit stuffed because precision capacitors are really hard to hard. To, well, they're expensive for decent ones, and so I'm just going to rough it. You know, like it doesn't matter if it's. 20% off, whatever, you know, I can always measure, um, just as long as it's ballpark. Um, and the idea is, you know, it might form part of a, a music synth, it might inform me about how to um, wire up circuits for input from uh, earthquake sensors, seismo stuff. Um, I've got the power supply put together. I've got the design. I've found that um, somewhere here. These things for the, the sockets, um, for each of these. These, I wasn't sure about this because I mean the standard is like the, is it four mil like sockets? These are two mil, but that'd be nice. It'd give me enough spacing. And they actually, when you put the plug in them, it works. So, and it'll give me enough space so I can mark on here what the functions of these things are. 
I mean, that's what I. There's a bit of a pause on this because because I'll need to spend maybe a hundred euros or something. I I want to constrict it to less than a hundred euros. Um, the multiplier chips AD six five five, I think. Um, they're about I don't know about ten dollars each, something like that. Then the potentiometer. I'm, I'm getting all the parts from China. Uh, it turns out that. Um, these little babies, these potentiometers that the Chinese sourced, and uh, you can see I've got it breadboarded here to to see see how it behaved. Uh, the, the potentiometers came with these, it says on the back, Mexico bones. If it really is bones, then they're, they're decent. And, and this did actually seem to give decent quality, wire-wound potentiometer. It did actually seem to give quite a clear um, no-hoppy sort of range. Oh, here's the dog. Hello, Claudio. <coughs> and, yeah, uh, trying things like, oh, well, I mean, what I've got going on here, there's the log surf. No, sorry, that's the, um, it's a precision rectifier because it like doing the log circuit which is down here somewhere else um, it occurred to me that there's a problem with doing log circuits because if you get a negative value then it's undefined uh, so what it occurred to me I could save a bit of space by doing a single op amp precision rectifier so that even if it's a negative voltage going in it'll uh, it'll make it positive so you you can only have positives, and it'll save perhaps a, a an inverter stage in there. Um, what else? Um, that's about it, really. Um, oh, great! Another thing I want to test out is um, playing with. Uh, the neural net stuff, like what this will represent is at most one neuron that you might do digitally in a deep learning situation. It might at most be one neuron, but to get a kind of picture, like a mental picture of how the thing behaves, and like these actual neural networks, they, they're impulse based. So, you know, it might be worthwhile seeing how the impulse-based thing operates uh, using analog components. Um, and uh, compare that to the behaviour of like more standard um, um, cells in the neural network um, that are working on continuous rather than inputs. And, you know, just like, just to piss around, basically. And um, I think, you know, it's just one of those kind of good feelings that it might be informative. And I suppose that's about it. And the reason I'm doing it to video is because I've just filled another bloody notebook. And I need to put this down until, you know, it's got to be a weekend job for now. I've got other things to get on with, so I've just got to, you know, I'm very good at doing these long-term projects, so, that, you know, it could be a year or two before I finish this thing. Uh, but, you know, I'm a stubborn little bugger. And so I, so I know, so I don't forget where I'm up to.